And we are live. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing channel. Before we get going today, please make sure to like the video, comment your thoughts down below, and please subscribe to the channel. Today, I'm going to be doing my Punch Perfect prediction for Masamichi Yabuki versus Ken Shiro, the rematch live this Saturday for the WBC Light Flyweight World Championship. If you haven't seen their first fight, I will leave a link down below for you guys to go and check it out. It's one of the best fights of 2021, considered one of the biggest upsets of the year as well. I'll get a little bit into that. But also round 10, where the fight finished, was my favourite round of last year. And I gave it my round of the year reward for 2021. A thrilling fight, uh, Boxing Journals does a tremendous job of the highlights. So I'll leave a link to that down below. Won't take up too much of your time to go back and watch that. But genuinely one of the best fights of last year. Round 7, 8 and 9 were tremendous. And then round 10... Like I said, best round of the year. In terms of the upset factor, a lot of people were picking Ken Shiro as the, as the reigning world champion. And Yabuki had a couple of defeats on his record. However, I actually picked Masamichi Yabuki to win that fight. And I predicted that he would do it in six rounds. Um, obviously, came a little bit later than that. But the reason I picked him was I felt he was just built all wrong for Ken Shiro. Ken Shiro's quicker with his feet, he's quicker with his hands, he's the more skilled technician, he's got the better jab, he's got one of the best jabs in the sport, a real cultured lead left hand. Um, clearly the better fighter, the better boxer, but how do you sort of get past the advantages in speed, the, the advantages in ability, the, the movement, the footwork? The size and the power of Yabuki is just all wrong for Ken Shiro. So last year, I picked Yabuki to win that fight. And another factor that hasn't been considered in this, um, really going into that first fight last year, Ken Shiro was not in the best of places. Obviously, he'd been out of the ring for over two years, not just because of everything that was going on in the world, you know what, but... He also had some troubles away from the ring, a drink driving incident, and even for some of his fights prior to his hiatus, I felt that he wasn't quite at the top of his game, Ken Shiro, and he wasn't fully invested into boxing. He came back, got a victory over 12 rounds, and then went into the Yabuki fight. And whilst I think, you know, he's able to shake off some of the rust, I don't think we saw the best of him. His advantages in speed didn't really show at any point in the fight. I also think it took him too many rounds really to get going as well. So I think that played a massive factor in this fight, in the first fight. And going into the rematch, I think Ken Shiro has spent the last year training to get revenge. Um... He could have gone down any other route, but he's wanted this rematch and he's been targeting this rematch and he's been living in the gym ever since. I follow him on Instagram and I've been staying up to date with his team and his camp. He's really been working hard to try and get this belt back, which we haven't really seen from Ken Shiro over the last couple of years. He's been ill-disciplined and hasn't been as focused on being champion as he should have been. So he's really motivated going into this one. And I think it has to be mentioned that he can perform better than last time. Whereas Yabuki, I'm not so sure. I think we saw the best of Masamichi Yabuchi, um, Yabuki sorry, in the first fight. I think we saw that he um, you know, he put forth the perfect game plan and, and really exposed the holes and the in the inactivity and the um, the sort of wasted years in Ken Shiro's career and he used every advantage, his size advantage, his power, and he boxed brilliantly. In terms of the actual fight and how it played out, Ken Shiro, like I said, has the much better jab. But he was, every time throwing, every time he threw the jab, it was countered by a big right hand. And that was because, although he was quicker, Yabuki just had the superior size and reach. He's the much naturally longer and bigger fighter. So he's able to throw when he's not necessarily in distance. Whereas Ken Shiro, because he's smaller, short arms, he has to get into range and, and do his work and then get out again. Whereas Yabuki was able to just stay out of range, not let, not allow him in, and just throw from distance. He was countering with the big right hand over the top of, of Ken Shiro's lead hand. And he was also throwing in threes and fours, which was forcing Ken Shiro onto the back foot with nowhere to go. He was trapped in the corner. He was on the ropes. He had nowhere to really sort of escape from. He had no real angle of escape. So Yabuki just kept on at him, kept hitting him hard, kept, you know, keeping him under pressure. And Ken Shiro was never able to get going. Then, because of the, the sort of eye injury to, to Yabuki, the blood started flowing and stuff. That sort of 
threw things up a little bit and he started to tire and Ken Shiro started to come into the fight sort of around the 7 and 8 mark and he started being able to get inside and work to the body and exchange with Yabuki and he was hurting Yabuki, he was getting hurt himself a little bit but he was able to start having success because he wasn't having to get past the reach uh, disadvantage, he was inside and he was doing his work and he looked quite good, you know he works upstairs well and then goes down to the body and you started to see that he can be really competitive and perhaps take over and in the 10th round he had Yabuki in all sorts of trouble and it looked like he was going to get him out of there but then he got clipped himself he tied out in pursuit of the stoppage and Yabuki just got the finish and, and one of the best wins of last year and the best win of his career Yabuki is a bit of a warlord as I like to call him not the most talented fighter in the world not the most skilled fighter in the world but big at the weight powerful at the weight and if you're not prepared to take those punches if you're not prepared to take risks to get on the inside against him you're ultimately going to come up short so Listen, I think going into this weekend, Ken Shiro is going to be much improved. Um, I think that we're going to see a much better version of him. But I do just wonder, is Yabuki built all wrong for him? You know, does he have to take too many risks to get on the inside? And can Yabuki, just because of his superior power and superior reach advantage, just keep things long and counter all night long like he did last time? I think Ken Shiro is going to be a little bit smarter this time and I think it's going to be more competitive going into the second half of the fight. However, I think Yabuki will start to get to him late on this time and then we'll start to see a bit more of a repeat of the first fight. Whilst I think Ken Shiro will have the lead this time and he will have boxed better early on, I think Yabuki is going to get to him once again. And once he starts landing flush, it's tough to deal with. I just think that although Ken Shiro is the better fighter, the better boxer, um, more proven at world level as well, Yabuki is just built all wrong for him. And it's quite rare in rematches, and often I sort of go against the what happened in the first result. I'll often sort of change my pick and, and go for the, the person that lost the first time round to right the wrongs. And I think he does right a lot of wrongs in this fight, Ken Shiro. But I just think Yabuki's built all wrong for him. Hits too hard. And I think in rounds 11, rounds 10 or 11, he'll get to him once again and get a late stoppage. But... I'm rooting for Ken Shiro to turn things back around because I want to see him in the unifications with uh, with Guy Gucci. I want to see him in with Alvarado, etc. I'd love to see him involved in those big fights. And Ken Shiro, out of the, the Japanese like flyweights, he's the, the biggest name. That Ken Shiro moniker has sort of made him famous. Although he's got the sort of baby face look, he can really fight. And I think he's a, a really talented fighter. So I would like to see him make up for all the wrongs he's done in the last couple of years and, and get a victory here. But I just think Yabuki might be all wrong for him. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Really looking forward to this fight. Make sure to subscribe to the channel because there's loads of other predictions coming this week, like Ortiz McKinson, for example. But I'll catch you next time.